If someone says, can we show your student reel? You don't have it here, right? No, All right. I don't think I do. I did no. a blog with your student reel, so I'm just going to find that, <laughs> if that's cool with you. Go I, for it. I always still use your, uh, your student reel as the example of... Uh... Oh, fuck. How far down is it? Uh, there we go, here's your stuff. Yeah, this is it. Now, when was the last time you watched your reel? It was a while ago. Can I make this bigger? Can I go to Vimeo? Can we zoom in? Ah, uh, that's probably enough. Yeah, man, you're like, okay, this is something that still kind of blows my mind that people still like don't do the uh, modeling on top of a photo thing. What do you think about that? You know how you, you know how you modeled on top of photos you took? I don't know why, I don't know why people don't do it. You know, you get the best, <laughs> you, you, you just get the, the most accurate looking models. What's more accurate than a photo, a photo? Yeah. Um, yeah, you can have a lot of people, I don't think it's sort of as much of a trend now, but you know, a lot of people were using blueprints. You know, yeah. there was a while in the industry where a lot of people who wanted to get into modeling did a lot of cars and they modeled cars from blueprints. Yeah. And yeah, they're great. You can, you can get a car that looks like a car, but it just looks kind of like any other car, you know, an yeah. almost accurate car. And I saw, did I see, there was a, there was, we had this really one small module at uni where this was in my first year at the very start where it was a really, really brief intro to how to get one photo of a square boxy building that we had on campus and just model a cube just so we can get the right, the rough proportions. Yeah. That was it. It was just one photo. And I thought, wow, this is really, really hard. But then I realized it's just so much more accurate. Yep. And then taking that to the next level is actually really difficult because as soon as you introduce, you can make a, a, a photo look, a model line up to one photo. But as soon as you introduce another, another photo, another picture from another angle, yep. it's so much more difficult. And then as soon as you add another one, now once you triangulate, you get the most accurate model. And I saw in like a couple of people's showreels in the industry, photo modeling. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. And I, and I messaged a few people in the industry and I was like, oh, how do you, how do you do this? Yeah. And yeah, so I started to do it. And in my show reel, I made a conscious effort, only have stuff where I line up to photos yep. and 3d scanning was around and you could kind of do it, but it wasn't anywhere near as accessible or as popular it is as it is now. And I made a conscious effort in my showreel to go out and photo the assets that I want to make. Yeah, so I, which is the best. Because you, you physically get to go there and see it for yourself, which helps you understand it even more. Yeah. Oh, for sure, for sure. I actually took, you know, I did a short film um, with a couple of friends in my second year um, with this helicopter, and we chose to do a helicopter, and I could have got blueprints online, but I was like, you know what, I'm a student. I don't care. I'm going to go up and hire a camera from our, um, our loan store for free at uni, but I'm going to pay for a ticket up to Cambridge, and go yeah. to the museum and choose this helicopter. When I went up and took loads of photos, modeled to it, was able to lift textures off of it and project it. Well, down. you also know all the camera information, which helps lining up. Makes your life so much easier than trying to get like photos online for sure. Oh, for sure. For sure. And also, you know, there's the photos, you get high resolution, you get all the, the metadata from the camera um, and the focal length and everything like that. But I think the most important thing is, as you said, actually looking at this in real life, yeah. and, you know, rubbing your hands along it and how rough actually is it and how sharp, how sharp are our edges, how sharp are details and just seeing how light rolls off of it and just form and everything like that. Yeah, this and is... that was the same with, with oh, the elephant. How did you do an elephant? <laughs> well, um, so 
I, I went up to uh, what was the zoo? Oh, oh so you physically uh, went to a zoo and took like took photos of elephants? Yeah, I bought, yeah went up to went up to a zoo. I made alphas from uh, from photos that I took. Um, that was in was that Essex? I think it was in Essex actually. So it was not too far away from London. So yeah. again, I got the train, um, took my photo, took took my camera up, um, went the first time, and. I think I put the wrong shutter speed on and my <laughs> photos were slightly a little bit too motion blur because I set it all manually and I was like damn it like only a few of them are usable yeah but I took another trip up again because it was just for me it was just so important to go and like see these things yeah. in real life and I don't think you know there's there's substance there's Mari there's should we use blender should we use Maya or whatever um there's all this other side of learning 3d that isn't ever spoken about and it's actually like getting out there in the real world and like seeing things and like building this mental library of like what feels real yeah. you know there's all these supervisors you know that have all of this experience and especially the old school ones you know they would advocate so much of going out in the real world and like just seeing things yeah for you know, sure if someone says that doesn't feel realistic, well, why doesn't it feel realistic? You know, it's just trying to trying to go to that extra level, and that's something that I've always tried to be conscious of. Yeah, for sure. You know, not just Maya extrude or you know, you know those yeah. things. Yeah, that's why I always like every every time like someone asks me like what they should make for their portfolio, I always say like real world. Like you can. F you can physically go and see the thing. You can like take as much reference as you need to. You can like, and the main thing is you build up your visual library where a lot of people think, oh, I just copied this concept art and it's done. Where if you physically build like a real motorbike or something, as you're building the models, you're kind of thinking about why these pieces are this way. Like, why is this connected to this? This must have a purpose, like things like that. Where if you just copy some like kitbash concept art, you're not really learning anything about like machines or anything like that. So that's why another reason why I always tell people to do like the real world thing. But like one thing I really like about the fact of like you can are you watching my stream at all? Like can you see what I'm looking at? I can now, yeah. So like with this photo here, right? Like this is literally what we do at work. So if you display something like this, you're pretty much telling me you can work in a production environment. And I think that's just as important as doing like a good model. Like the presentation of being able to show you can model on top of a photo shows me that you can, co firstly, you have the eye to, um, you have the eye to match detail or to like pixel perfect. And secondly, this is literally what we do at work anyway. So you, you could probably fit in easier than someone that's just sculpted some dragon, if that makes sense. Oh, for sure. But if you sculpted some dragon, you'd get on the front of Art Station. Yeah, and that's what people know, more care about. Because it's, <laughs> because, it's, because it's it's cooler, right? Yeah. Um, for sure, it's it's a lot harder, and it probably takes like I don't know, three four times longer to model to a photo like this. Yeah, for sure. Um, but you get a much more accurate result, and, and you I get a job. A lot of people, and you get a job. You get a job. <laughs> Which is um, the most important oh, thing. You can sculpt the dragon afterwards, get the job first. Well, that's, that's literally my, my mindset. It was, let me technically learn how to be able to recreate things. And then once I get into industry, I'll learn the, the artistic side of this. Um, yeah. That's the thing, because you also, like, when you, when you do, like, this sort of technical, like, photo reel, like, asset creation you've obviously built your visual library now so if you wanted to do like a creature or something like that you already kind of know how you would visually like tackle it like what sort of references you would gather from the real world like you've already gone through that stage of thinking first instead of just following art station if that makes sense that's yeah. why i always tell people do like do do the real world first like don't even bother with like concept stuff for sure, I couldn't couldn't agree more. Um, damn, we got a decent amount of questions actually. Um, I'll try not rub it on. <laughs> all right, no worries. Um, what would you say is this? 
How important is index for refraction? Is it something you always have to generate a map for complex materials? I don't know anything about that. Can I get a drink while you answer that? Yeah, go for right. it. So in index of refraction, um, no, pretty much nowadays we, we kind of just paint specular roughness, the color, the displacement, and lots of different masks. So the index of refraction, a lot of that is just handled and calculated in the shader. So even say for, you know, index of refraction, so if you want a refractive surface like a glass or whatever, um, that's just kind of handled in the shader. Um, the actual strength of, of the specular or the index of refraction, that's kind of now being defined in the shader and you're using the masks to, to adjust all the other areas. Oh, did you finish? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, I just opened your, um, your gum road. Do you want to talk about some of your stuff you have here at the moment? Yeah, so pretty much the reason why I started doing all of this was pretty much for the reasons I've spoken about. And it's just to put out training that I think is, is lacking. Um, and I, the fir first and foremost, I enjoy doing it and that I enjoy putting out information and sharing knowledge. Um, but yeah, the one you have up, the, the Mari texturing tutorial, this is specifically focused on all of the things that I, I spoke about and it's going out. It's model, isn't it? I'm using, yep. Using my own, my own model, using my own photos. I went down to the London Science Museum, photographed it, and we go through exactly how to match the, the photo reference. So, you know, if you want to get a job in the VFX industry, texturing, look dev, I just made this for, for, to, to be able to recreate um, a photo. So that was, that's pretty much what that's been focusing on. And then since then, I started my own YouTube channel, uploading some free stuff um, and really trying to focus on not focusing on specific software. And it's just talking, you know, yes, I use software, but it's, I've tried to focus it on the fundamentals and theories and not just it's this button here, it's this button here. It's, we use this. And this is why we use this. And that's kind of what a lot of I've tried to focus my training on. I've kind of There's noticed of that with like a lot of tutorials is they focus on, you know, just press this button, press this. But I think it's more important when the people actually explain why you press this button. So your, your tutorial explains like the thinking behind all this, right? Definitely. I've definitely tried to focus on that. And... You know, there's nothing more boring than having to go through five or six different tutorials to try and find the thing that you want to do. Yeah. And a lot of tutorials, you just, you, you follow a tutorial to find out how to do one particular technique. Whereas this, it's, it's not really a tutorial. It's more of, I try to make it as a course to, to learn how to match a photo to get a job. Pretty much yeah, that's a exactly what you want. Uh, yeah. And then recently, um, I've 18, 18 bucks to get a job. <laughs> Sick. Bargain. Yeah, exactly, man. So sorry, what were you saying? And then recently, I've just focused on, um, I've got some free content out there, um, just showing how to use um, textures um, to get realistic breakup. Um, with a motorbike that one of my mates has modeled, Josh Doherty. Um, and then recently I've kind of been focusing on a lot of on surface imperfections. And this is, they're just black and white maps of actual, like I got some glass and I sprinkled dust and I got some wax and I put my hands in, in it and I'd scrape it along the glass and I'd scan all of these different things and I'd get some paper and I'd get some chalk and rub it across a, um, a wall, a brick wall or concrete floors and getting a key and things like this. Yeah, sick, and scanning damn. all of these textures in. And once you scan these in, you get so much randomness and subtle things that happen in the real life, all of these accidents. And if you use these imperfections in your textures, which I found, you get something that looks so much more realistic than just these grunges that you can generate procedurally online. Yeah, for sure. You know, 
CG is all about randomness, but not too much randomness. You know, with a model, if you've got, you know, on the side of, you know, a spaceship, all of these panels that are too, the panel heights are way too much. You know, it's going to look too much, but it's all about being able to pull it back, you know, yeah. having those imperfections randomly, but not too random, yeah. but not. And that's kind of why I made these. Yeah, for sure. To, just to focus on that. And then also, you know, they're essentially drag and drop. They're just black and white maps and, sick. you know, just trying to, yeah, just create a library for people to use. That's sick, man. But yeah, it's funny because, like, people think of, like, you just do everything procedurally and call it done. But obviously you have to put your own, like, effort into it as well. Because, like, if, if someone just does something super procedural, it's, like, pretty obvious. Oh, it always looks... Way too manufactured, yeah. way too manufactured. And you actually look in the real life um, and not many things actually have, you know, these edge chips, you know, if you actually look at the real life and you look at um, old cars or old uh, machinery, they probably don't have that many edge chips. You yeah, know? exactly. I mean, because, yeah, so many, like, procedural shaders you jump on, and it just looks like the... I, I've kind of noticed that as well, like... Like, there's a lot of students that kind of focus their texturing on really grungy power tools, and it kind of... It looks... It gets... It kind of looks super generic. Like, it's, like, overly grungy for the sake of it, and it just doesn't feel, like, realistic. I sure, do think I'm... over-texturing is a definitely a thing to watch out for as well. Over texturing, putting too much. It's like a painting. That's, it's, it's literally how I, you know, it's composition. With a model, if you've got too much um, greebles everywhere, it's going to look too busy. With textures, if you have too much breakup, you have too much roughness, you have too much edge chips, it just looks, it looks too much. You know, you look at, you do an actual painting, say with paintbrushes, it's all about composition. You don't want too much busyness. Um, you need areas of rest and with texturing it's not just about adding detail it's choosing where not to put detail yep. um so you know again you go back to the to the real world and just if you're looking at you know a metal you want to create a metal with paint on top of it with edge chips before you do that go out and search online you know what how does it look like and yeah, then once exactly. you have an idea of what it looks like, that's when you can start doing it. Otherwise, you're just, you're just randomly, you know, when you're younger, say, say if you, you know, you're at school and someone has a bit of paper and says, draw a house. <laughs> yeah. or, draw a everyone, castle. Much, or draw a castle. Pretty much everyone's idea or pretty much everyone's picture of a house or a castle is probably going to look very similar because all yeah. they're doing is just their idea of what a house looks like. Yeah. And, you know, if you then say, go and draw that house, everyone's, everyone's house is going to look like that house. I don't know if that, that kind of makes sense. It, it kind of, do you know who Feng Zhu is? Yeah. So he, he mentioned something about, like, students. So he talked about, like, visual library. He kind of mentioned the similar thing, right? He says, like, like, if they just got a group of their students and told them to draw a castle, you could tell which of them had traveled around the world and which ones hadn't. Like, because if you, if, if people told you a castle, you usually just do it, draw some towers and a box, right? But the people that actually had traveled around Europe, they applied a lot more thought into like what type of castle it is, like things like that. It's the same sort of thing, like people that, I guess, experience more of the real world have more understanding of like how things really are instead of just, like when you, when you did these aircraft, right? Like, I know they're, like, just fantasy spaceships, but, like, the material, the way it's dealt with is dealt how, a, like, a conventional aircraft would be, right? Oh, yeah, like, for sure. You, you know, you look at, I think it's, you know, it's pretty obvious, you know, a lot of Star Wars is, is, is based off of um, World War II yeah. airplanes. And, you know, if you want to be able to recreate something like this, you know, this doesn't exist in the real world, right? You know, but it's based off of something, and... I just, you know, if you want to recreate something like this, just look at the nearest real world example yeah. and take inspiration from that. Yeah, exactly.